In order to learn how to find the area of a shape, we first need to be able to define the base and height of a polygon. A base is a very simple definition. The base is a side. Any side of the shape can be considered the base. So what I suggest is always pick the side that looks straight to you. So right now, I would say that I would choose that side as the base. However, if the shape were to be facing this way, I may select this side. You may have learned in the past that the base is the bottom, and although we can use the bottom side of the polygon as our base, that's not the real definition. It's any side of the polygon. The height, on the other hand, is a more complicated term. The height is a line extending 90 degrees out of the base. So, we need to find a line that is extending from our base at a 90 degree angle. And in this case with our rectangle, we have our base highlighted. We can just use the side as the height because I know that these two lines right here are intersecting at a 90 degree angle. So we have our base is a side and our height is extending 90 degrees out of the base and that line can be a side. So as far as the information we have on this screen, this probably isn't anything new to you. But as we look at different quadrilaterals and as we move on to different shapes, these two terms and knowing the actual definitions is going to be important for us. So looking at our next shape, we need to determine the base and determine the height. So take a second to highlight the base and the height in two different colors. Your colors don't have to match mine. I'm using red for my base and blue for my height. So we can choose any side to be our base. However, I always like to choose the one that is at the bottom. It's not the definition, but it just looks the straightest for me to look at. So I have my base there, and then my height is a line extending 90 degrees out of the base. And because we are working with a rectangle, and we know these are 90 degree angles, I can simply just use a side to represent my height. So again, I have found the base and the height of this rectangle. Looking at our next shape, we have a parallelogram that is not a rectangle. We're not working with 90 degree angles here. So again, I'm going to select my base, and I could choose any side because the base is a side of a polygon. However, here is where it's even more important. Choose the sides that look straight to you. And that's not really an accurate description other than to say look straight. When I look at my two sides going up here, they look like they're going diagonal, diagonal to me. So I'm going to choose the top or bottom side because that looks straight from where I'm sitting. So I've determined my base. Now, again, my height is a line extending 90 degrees out of the base. If we trace this other side, that's not 90 degrees. So we can't use these sides as the height. We need to draw in the height ourselves, going at a 90 degree angle, extending from the base to the other top side. And now we have drawn in our height, and you can see that we've drawn it at a 90 degree angle. And I could then measure that line or the height that we have drawn in. Looking at our next shape, although it may not look exactly the same as yours, I just want to make something very clear. From where I'm sitting right now, if I were to pick the base, I would be picking this side right here because it looks to be going straight up and down. 
The bottom side is going up on a diagonal from where I'm looking. So I wouldn't want to pick that as my base. It's this idea of saying that the side that seems to go be, be going straight up and down or straight side to side would be the base you want to select because it makes drawing the height easier. Now to just match your sheet, you probably actually think the bottom is the base. And so I'm going to go ahead and highlight my base. And then again, my height. I cannot trace this side because it's not a 90 degree angle. So I need to go ahead and draw in my height of my parallelogram, drawing it at a 90 degree angle. So now that we've determined the base and the height of these polygons, we can now find the area of these polygons. So just two examples. You're no longer going to use your worksheet that you have with you because I'm going to be making up numbers that won't match your measurements. So after measuring, I found this side to be 2 and 1 fourth inches. And this side to be 3 and 7 eighths inches. Now, because of my knowledge of rectangles, I know that this side is 3 and 7 eighths inches, and this side is 2 and 1 fourth inches. Looking at our formula at the top, area equals base times height. So I'm going to go ahead and identify my base and my height. And so to find this area, all I need to do is 3 and 7 eighths times 2 and 1 fourth. And I am going to use a calculator to solve that, giving me the answer of 8 and 23 30 seconds. So again, after measuring, and these won't match your measurements, I'm taking my base and my height and following my formula to find my answer. In our next shape, again, I need to measure to find my area. So here, before I even start measuring, I'm going to identify my base. And now I know that I can't use this length for my height because it is not coming out at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to draw in my height, doing my best to draw it exactly at a 90 degree angle. So the two measurements I'm going to be using for my formula are my base, which came out to three and a half inches, and my height, which came out to three and three quarter inches. This, the length of this side is not important for finding my area. I take my base, which is three and a half, times my height, which is three and three quarter inches, and I'm going to multiply with my calculator to find an answer of 13 and 1 eighth inches square. And so again, it's important to identify your base and your height, especially when the height is not a side using your correct measurements. So we will be practicing this more together. There was no need to do these on your own. It was just following along with our system.